What's going on? Welcome to Ball Alert. I am Cliff Hill. I am here with Mrs. Holly Robinson Pete and Mr. Rodney Pete. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Fantastic. We're doing great. Listen, you guys are, you know, hosting Queen's Court. You guys are kind of guiding these amazing young ladies, helping them find love. We have Miss Evelyn, Nivia, and Tamar. Why did you guys want to, you know, host this show? Well, we really actually, believe it or not, love this genre. And so Rodney and I watch a lot of dating shows. It's kind of like our thing as a couple. And it, we really enjoy it. It's our guilty pleasure. And we, when we were approached to do this show, we thought, oh, we like this twist. These are young women in their 40s and up. And they're, you know, they're in a different time in their lives. They, we've all seen publicly what they've been through. And also, well, we didn't know this until we actually almost stepped on set. We didn't know who the women were, but we just liked conceptually that they were celebrity women looking for love um, at a certain point in their lives. And then we felt like we were almost married 30 years. We thought, you know what? We, we might be able to impart some wisdom. I have a little something for them. Absolutely. I love that. And I like, the, like that you said that the age group, I think it's good to see an older group, the more mature you know, I'm used to watching a lot of dating shows on reality TV as well. So just already just watching the maturity was amazing so far to watch. Now, what did you guys want to take from your relationship and the success of your marriage and kind of put into these women? What were some key things you guys want to share with them? Well, I mean, we just tried to be open about our relationship, how we started our journey over almost 30 years of, of being together. And we were trying just to be an open book for them. They had so many questions for us along the way. As, as we just talked about, these were women uh, in their 40s that had been through relationships, some good ones and not so good ones that has been in the public. Uh, we also had the guys that were had been in relationships as well. And they were trying to find, you know, the right one and how to make it work and not that we have all the answers, but we can only express what has worked for us. And that's what we tried to convey to these uh, to these queens and also to the kings. Now, I have to ask you guys, I've kind of read it into your story and your marriage, even from how, you know, you proposed to her and how she wanted to get you back with that big surprise element at the wedding. Just learning so much about you guys, I'm kind of falling in love with, like, your love story, right? Oh, um, what was that like? What was this process like? You know, you guys are trying something new, doing a TV show. What, what what kind of effect did this have on, you know, your relationship? If it can grow more than it already was. I think, you know, we appreciate each other a lot more after this. Because when we were dating, when Rodney was courting me, if you will, mm -hmm. in the 90s, we didn't have social media. We didn't have, like, all these dating apps and stuff. Like So there were a lot of things that we didn't have to deal with. So we felt a certain level of empathy. We feel like it's harder to find love right now. Um, and so we were just excited that they, that the queens and the kings were even open to hearing some of our stories. And some of them, most of them knew who we were. And so they, they kind of knew the story a little bit. But to be able to impart wisdom to people who are authentically looking for love and be able, and were opening themselves up was just a great feeling. I'd say we probably learned gratitude for what we got yeah. and how hard it is out there. And thank God we met and got married when we did. Hard <laughs> <laughs> hard our time out here. <laughs> time yeah. yeah. Now, it's awesome to see that you guys probably thought you would be pouring into them, but you guys are also able to learn some things from them and learn some things from the show. I think that's awesome. Now, I know that you said, uh, Miss Holly, that once you, you guys didn't really know who the ladies were until the very end, so almost stepping on. But once you knew who they were, and I think we've all seen their love lives and like you said the good ones the bad ones why do you think these three ladies specifically were perfect for this show listen i'm just gonna give that to peacock and will packer that the fact that they really did their their homework um i think these ladies were perfect and the kings too i mean they just did such a great job finding the right people for this um I didn't, I knew Evelyn, I knew Tamar, but did not know Nivea. Uh, I'm now her number one fan. I love her so much. I think America's going to fall in love with her as they will with the other two. We know who they are and we know their stories, but it's kind of on paper. When we get a chance to see them in this light, I think that is just really 
what is so in, in, appealing about the show um, because we might learn some different things and we might see ourselves in them. Mm-hmm. You know, we might see ourselves in them and we might see ourselves in these Kings. My job, one of my jobs I felt was to make them a little less judgmental, right? Yeah. Like when I first met Rodney Pete, there were things I didn't like about him. They, they were, there were ways that I could have put him in a box. You know, he was a quarterback and I thought, Oh God, the groupie thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and we went for it. But I mean, had I been very judgmental about, oh, he's not on my criteria list, I would have limited myself and we wouldn't be sitting here today, three decades later. So I wanted to say to them, just try not to judge a book by its cover. And at first they were a little resistant to it, but then, you know, as it went on, I feel like they they liked um, our perspective. Absolutely. I love that you said that. I think sometimes we have our checkbox in our head or we think maybe this person isn't our type, but the person that's not your type may end up being perfect for you. So I love that you mm-hmm. said that. Absolutely. Got to be open now, to it. Absolutely. Now, my last thing before I go, um, I love rituals in couples. I think, you know, I've been in couples therapy before and my therapist would give us these little things to do. For example, if we have an argument, we'll write it and put it in a box instead of just coming to each other. And I think one thing I read about you guys is you guys 20 second hug ritual that you do. How did that come about? And are you guys still practicing that today? Because I'm about to steal it. <laughs> well, first of all, you can have it. Yeah. And props <laughs> to are. you for wanting to go to therapy and being able to sit down and do that with your with your wife, your partner, mm-hmm. because that is is so important. Uh, no, men don't like to do that very often. You know, you absolutely. talk to most men, they don't like to go to therapy and, and open up and share their feelings. So yes, again, props to you. And the 20 second hug came from, I forget who we stole it from years ago, but we did steal it from somebody. So you could steal it from us, but essentially it's when you're in the heat of a battle, when you're, you know, or not, or not, but that's really when it works. Um, yeah, the idea is to hug each other for 20 seconds and it diffuses whatever you are fighting about. There's something ceremonially, like when you're heart to heart, where you start to melt, that glacier begins to melt. And that can be difficult if you're really going at it. And like, mm-hmm. you know, you be gritting your teeth right up to 15 and 16. But, but when you, you get to 17. You can't turn it down. If the one, one partner on one side asks for yeah. it. You, you you have to you have to deliver you have yeah. to get so sometimes when you know Rodney will ask for it at the time that is I am least really wanting to do that <laughs> and but he but you know that's the rule so and it really does diffuse whatever's happening at that moment. I love that. I think it's so beautiful because sometimes we're upset. We want to talk to the person, but our pride can get in get in the way. Mm-hmm. So it kind of makes you put your pride aside and say, "Okay, let's come on, let's do this." Yeah. I love that. That's so yeah. awesome. Listen, I'm looking forward to the world seeing this season. I'm looking forward to finishing off this season. I think you guys are doing an amazing job. Thank you so much for having me today, and I'm wishing you guys the very best with everything. Thank you so uh, thank much. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care. <laughs>